I want us to stay standing for the reading of today's word. We're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 to 22. The Bible says, When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt, equipped for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Succoth to the to, and encamped at Etham, on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night do not depart from before them. God, we thank you for your word. Speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Amen. We can take our seats. Good morning, Flat Church. How are you? It's interesting as we are about to get into the word the sun is beginning to shine and one of the series we are going through this year and this moment from now to somewhere in november or december is walking in freedom walking in freedom our mission is to invite upcoming generations to live in freedom so the question is how can we live in that freedom how can we walk in the freedom that jesus is inviting us to now as we've been going through the series one thing has been apparent to me in the conversations I've been having with people, in growth group, and just in studying this passage. The fact that as a people, we fail to marry freedom and the loss of control. Because freedom to us is doing what we want to do. We've probably heard it, or we probably even say it. I am free, I can do what I want to do. You know, I am free, I can do me. I remember a couple of years ago, many years ago when I was growing up, there was a famous song by the rapper Drake. Now, this is not a promotion of his music. You know, um, I'm more Tim Kendrick. But what I'm trying to say is, there's a song that he did that had the lyrics that says, I'm doing me. I am living life right now. And this is what I will do till it's over. And I remember singing that song to myself, hyping myself up, energizing myself to face the day because that song was my anthem. Because for so long and for a lot of us, freedom is doing us. Freedom is living life as we want to live it. Freedom is doing what we want to do, when we want to do, however we want to do it, and for as long as we want to do it. But this morning, I wanted to challenge us. To say, if we're going to begin walking in freedom, if we are going to allow God to free us so that we can walk in his freedom, then it means we let go of control and trust that God is in control. We let go of all control and trust that God is is in control. This is something that I want us to know. This is something I want us to hold on to. We can forget anything about this series. You know, you can forget who preached. You can forget what passage we preached from. There's some passages this couple of weeks we've done two chapters. You know, I know we are forgetting as well. I know at growth group, but one thing I want us not to forget is that walking in freedom means realizing and trusting that God is in realizing and trusting that God is in control. And we see it with the story of the children of Israel. We see it from the moment where God tells Moses, I see your iniquities, I see what you're going through, I hear your cries, I hear the cries of the children of Israel. We see it as Moses runs away, but God continues to meet him where he is in a very supernatural way by the burning bush. We see it as God is telling Moses to say, you will go to Pharaoh and you will say these things and you will do these things to show him that I am in control because God is in control. We see it when it comes to a place where the children of Israel are actually set free because God is in control. So walking in freedom means realizing and trusting that God is in control. So the question we are answering today is how do we respond to the fact that God is in control? How do you and I respond? How do we live life then with realizing that God is in control? If you're taking notes, write this down. Firstly, because God is in control, we can trust that his ways are better than ours. 
because God is in control. We can trust that his ways are better. Verse 17 to 18 of Exodus 13, the Bible says, When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest the people change their mind when they see war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt, equipped for battle. Now, Pharaoh at this point might have allowed the children of Israel to go because of the plagues. You know, there were 10 plagues that happened and they got him scared. So he says, you know what? You guys can go. You guys can leave. But what we will see, especially in next week's passage, in next week's message, is that as soon as he makes this decision, he then wants them to come back into captivity. He starts to pursue them so that they can come back to a place of slavery. And God, knowing that this is the case, he knows there's a short way out of Egypt. But if my people take this short way out of Egypt, they're going to face war and they want to return back to Egypt. And so instead of taking this short route, we are going to take the route through the wilderness. We're going to take the route that is taking us through the wilderness. The Bible tells us that. That lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. They'll see war through the short way and they will want to return Egypt. And this should tell you and I something about freedom. That whatever you and I have been freed from will always want to keep us in slavery. Whatever we have been freed from will always want to keep us back in captivity. Sin will always want to rule over us. Addiction will always want to take what is best of us. And if we keep on doing things according to our own way, if we keep on living life according to our own way, we end up being in a place where we easily give in to sin. If you and I live life according to our own way, we end up living life giving in and being enslaved to our own desires. Because if the children of Israel took the short route that took them out of Egypt, their freedom would have been shortened. Because just because the, the, the route is, is short does not mean it was safe. Just because it was short does not mean it was safe. And you can agree that the same is true about us. We've taken shortcuts in life that have led to trouble. We've gotten in trouble sometimes because we've decided to take shortcuts. Because left to our own ways, that is the route we usually take. Left to our own ways, we always want to choose the easy way out. Left to your own ways, you're always trying to choose what gratifies your flesh. Because doing life God's way is a little bit difficult. Left to our own ways, we always want to seek or we look for freedom in ways that take us back into captivity. We look for freedom in ways that take us back to be people who are in slavery. But God's ways are better than ours. Because God's ways allow us to stand firm. Because God's ways allow us to live in freedom. Because God's ways allow us to not go back to a place of slavery. Now my question to us would be, do we really know God's ways? Or is, it, is that something we just, we just say? Because I think for many of us, if not all of us, we have learned that God's ways come packaged in things that are good and pleasing to us. Right? If, so, if something is good, then that is God's way. If it is not good, if it is difficult, then you start to question if God is even involved in that. However, this morning, I, I want us to reconcile with the fact that out of the abundance of God's goodness, out of the abundance of God's faithfulness, this journey of freedom will take you and I through the wilderness. And that is God's way. That is God's way that is better for you and I. Because God is in. Because God is in. What am I saying? Walking in freedom means realizing and trusting the fact that God is in control. It means trusting that God's way is better than our way. Which means realizing that on this journey of freedom, God will take you and I in the wilderness. You take us through the wilderness. What is the wilderness? The wilderness is a place that has no life. It's a deserted place. It has no life. And God takes us through that place so that you and I can realize that he is indeed the life. So we depend on him. So we depend on him only for our feet. What is the wilderness? The wilderness is a place where we are separated from things. It is just you and God. 
you are separated from your distractions. Those distractions that take God's place in your life. Those distractions that are demanding and claiming your freedom. The wilderness is that place where God comes in to say, if you are going to be free, then you need to make me Lord over you. That is the wilderness where we are separated from those distractions, where we are separated because God demands that he alone sets us free. God's way in this journey of freedom will see us in the wilderness. And this is not to embarrass us. Some of us think being in the wilderness is it's embarrassing. You're going to face things. This is not to destroy us, to think, no, we have reached to the end of ourselves. No, this is actually to prepare us. This is to prepare you for what is to come. Say that time and time again in this, in this series that in this world we will face trouble. That is the wilderness. So God's way prepares us for the trouble. And Jesus is the best example. If you look at Luke chapter 4, before Jesus begins his ministry, he is tempted in the wilderness. He's tempted by the devil in the wilderness. You see it with the children of Israel here as well. The Bible says, and the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped. Because the wilderness is not a place to destroy us. No, the wilderness is a place to prepare us, to stand firm. His ways prepare us so that we can live in his freedom. So if it is God who is leading us through the wilderness, you and I can trust that his ways are not just in the good and pleasing things of life. No, we can also trust that his ways are in the difficult moments, in the bad moments of life. Those moments that assure our freedom in him. Because, because the wilderness is a place that reminds you and I that we are messed up. The wilderness is a place that reminds us that we are as fallen as we come. The wilderness is a place that reminds us of, of how bad we are as a people. But it is also a place that reveals that God is our everything. And that only God can set you and I. And so my, my, my humble plea to you and I this morning is that we surrender to God because only he is in control. In this journey of freedom, you are not in control. Let us let go of the lies of the world that tell us that because we are free, we can do whatever it is we want. What if we led our lives by saying because we are free, we then do what God wants us to do because that is what true freedom is. That's how we respond. The first way we respond. That because God is in control, then his ways are better than ours. Secondly, the way we respond is by trusting that God is with us. Trusting that God is with us. Verse 19 and 22, the Bible says, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Sakoth and encamped an Ether on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of cloud, lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire, give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before. Now, Joseph is the patriarch that had taken the children of Israel to Egypt. And it had been now 400 years between Joseph's death and the children of Israel leaving or being let, allowed to leave Egypt. So that's a very long time, 400 years. But in that space, Moses still remembered the words of Joseph. The words Joseph made them swear to say, God will visit you. Moses remembered because this was a promise that assured the children of Israel that God was with them. This was a promise that assured them that God is a man of his word, that God is never late. He's actually on time, even though to us he is 400 years late. It's a promise that assures them that God is a man of his word and that he is a faithful God. And may, be, may this reminder be true to you and I, that God assures us with his word, that his word remains true. That if he sets the captives free, it means he has the power to set you and I free from sin. If his word assures us that he sets the captives free, it means he has the power to set you and I free from every addiction that is inflicting us. That if he sets the captives free, 
It means he has the power to set free those people you might be praying for. He has the power to set those people free, the ones you are interceding on their behalf. We know those people. We know there's people we've been praying years and years for, for them to come back to Jesus, for them to go and receive Jesus. We know we've been praying for those people. And sometimes I know we want to give up. And we're tired. But if he is a God who says he sets the captains free, if he is a God who sets people free, no matter how long, we can trust in the assurance of him. Because his assurance remains even 400 years later. Even as long as he takes. And he's assured us with his word. The Bible says, if the sun sets you free, then you are indeed. So we hold on to that assurance. That we are free. Indeed. He's assured, us, he's assured us with his word that if the old self has been crucified with him, then you are no longer slaves to sin, but you are now slaves to righteousness. He's assured us with his word that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that is the wilderness, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But he has not given you the spirit of, of, the spirit of fear. So I will fear no evil, for he is so he's, assure us, he's assuring us with his word, but he's also assuring us with his presence. Say, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. He's assuring us with his word, but also with his presence. And as he makes these assurances, he makes his presence known. We see it in scripture. He says, he went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. But the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night do not depart from being before the king. Do not depart from, from before the king. He was with the people every step of the way. He was present with them. He was a constant assurance that he is guiding their path in the wilderness. Even though the wilderness hurts. Even though the wilderness might not be our desired path. Because our desired path is the short path. But he's assuring us to say, in the wilderness, I will be with you. Because he was with the children of Israel. He's protecting them and watching over them. And the same is true for you and I. That God is with us every step of the way. On this journey of freedom that we have began, God is with you and I every step of the way. He is present in your fears. He is present in your doubts. He is present in your tears. He is present in your joy. He is present in your celebrations. He is present because he is with you. He is watching over you. He is guiding your path. He is protecting you in this journey of freedom. Now, I know for some of us, it might be scary. It might be daunting. And the reason being, maybe because slavery is all we know. Captivity is all we know. If you think about it, it's taken 400 years, which means for most of the children of Israel, they were born in Egypt. Not all of them. It means they were born in captivity. So slavery is all they know. Being in captivity is all they know. They do not have the history of saying, gare gare diri uku. No, they only know slavery and captivity. And that might be you and that. Slavery is all we know. Being in bondage is all we know. Well, maybe you were abused as a child and so abuse is all you know. Maybe you are coming from a broken family, so broken relationships are all we know. Maybe we, we went through things in life where people took advantage of us. So being taken advantage of is all we know. A friend of mine was doing a project in Karonga, so he spent some time at my house. And part of his project was shooting documentaries. Um, and one of the things he was shooting documentaries of was of prostitutes in Karnova. And when he came back home that evening, he was like, hey, man, I have a new perspective on the people I was interviewing. Because you would think that they maybe decide to choose this lifestyle. But what you don't know is they were born in this lifestyle. So prostitution is all they know. And that's the truth of our life. Sometimes being in bondage is all we know. Because that's where we were born. For the Israelites, they were born in Egypt. So slavery 
his own. Maybe we've been addicted for so long, we think there is no way out. Because addiction, the addiction we are carrying is now a part of our lives. Maybe that sinful lifestyle you're trying to exit, you're trying to leave, is all you know. You've built community around that. People love you for that identity that you carry. And you find it difficult to actually live in freedom because others is going to sound crazy. To the people you are leaving behind is going to sound crazy. We don't even know where to begin to start to ask God, say, God, please send me. How do you even ask for something that you don't know that you need? Because all you've ever known has been bondage and slavery. If that is you this morning, I want us to be in a place where we we realize what it is that we need. We realize. We, we realize what it is that we've been born in. We realize what it is that we have grabbed on along the way and we have made it to be a part of us. That thing might not come from God. I want us to realize that and then come to a place of trusting God. Because our ways do not come. But God's way. And God's ways might seem weird because we want a quick fix. But God wants to restore you. And in restoring you, he's going to take you through a journey that might hurt. He's going to take you through a journey that will go through the wilderness, a journey that you might not want. But it's a journey that you need. It is a journey that you will need. Because his ways are better than ours. His ways are better than us. Not only that, but he is sure. So as I finish, practically, what does this look like? Practically for you and I, what does this look like? How do we then live according to this gospel truth? Well, firstly, it, may, it means making difficult decisions that take away control from us. We need to be real, guys. We can't just speak these things today and then we leave and go, continuing as if life is normal. No, we need to start to make decisions that are difficult, but decisions that are beneficial. These are decisions that take away control, which means maybe you need to then commit to accountability. You need to commit to being accountable to someone because you know, you know you've tried, and every time you know you try, you always slip back into that sin. You know you've tried, and every time you've tried by yourself, you continue to live in sin. I know I have experienced that in my life. Where I mess up today and I promise God I will not do it again, and tomorrow I'm back at that place. And so sometimes it needs us to make serious and difficult decisions of looking out for accountability so that you're not walking this journey alone, but you have someone who is checking on you and say, hey, hey, those are practical decisions. Practical decisions. Difficult, but they are beneficial and helpful. So you need accountability. Godly Christian counsel. I know that it's, it takes humility. And for, for us as a people, humility is something that is not part of our DNA. It's the flesh leans more toward to pride than to humility. But it also takes humility to realize that I can't do this on my own. I need God to rescue me. The first thing I want us to do is making difficult decisions that take away. Take away. If it means going to bed at 9 p.m., if you don't want to, then let's go to bed at 9 if it means deciding not to text girls after 7 p.m., go that cigar now and then that see a guy what to do that. He gives us a message. You figure ten call or go full of young kid. Yeah, I'm at this moment. Those are some of the difficult decisions. If it means taking a step back from some of the people we interact with, some of the people we have conversations with, some of the people who are our day ones, it means taking a step back. And let's do that. Because what does it profit you? To gain the whole world. 
to gain it all, to gain the success, to gain the fame, to gain the, the fact that you are the best, you are the coolest person on campus. What does it gain you to be that person if you are going to be it? So let's make those difficult decisions. Difficult, but that's beneficial. And secondly, I want to ask us to bury ourselves in God. Bury ourselves in God. We say this week in, week out, but I think the practicality of it is something that we miss out. So I'll give you something practical. This week, go to growth. No excuses. This week, go to growth. This week, start your day by reading God's word. And if you're more, just start your day by reading God's word. I, I saw something that really hit me because I, I hate working. It's the worst thing. Funny enough, I, have, I come to work out here. So somewhere here is right? doing the workout. But I hate it because it's, it's tough. And sometimes I want to know how to do it so that I can be able to do it. But there's a quote I saw last night. actually says, the problem with people who want it all figured out is that they don't even start. It is those people who make mistakes by being a part of a group, by, being, by doing something about it that actually get better. And so for a lot of us, we, we claim we don't know how to read the Bible. Fine, just start a verse a day. You know, those people who studied the Bible did not begin by knowing the Bible. No, they had a verse a day, chapter a week. And as you go, you're getting better. You're burying yourself in God. Why should we bury ourselves in God's word? Because God's assurances are in you. His promises are in you. So you know what he is saying about your life by being buried in this book. Right? By being buried. In so that's the second thing I want to ask. You. Bury yourself. Be a part of a Bible study. Don't just join any Bible study. No. Make sure I go to Bible study or Wambas and Izan Izan Bible. That's why I want to encourage you. Join a growth group. Join a growth group. Show up for prayer night. Tuesdays, we're praying together as a community, as a family, as a church. We're praying for our city. We're praying for our families. We're praying for what we're going through. Bury yourself in God's word. Because when we do that, we then know what God is talking about. We then know that he is with us. We then know that his ways are better. Can we do that this week? Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Jesus, for your word. Your word that continues to remain true in this fallen world. Open our eyes to see what you are inviting us to. The freedom that you promised us. The freedom you have set us free. So as we take this journey into freedom, help us live free knowing that you are in control. We are not. And that you are our God. You are with us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to invite us to stand so that we can worship.